Hello and welcome to episode 2 of How To League of Legends. This is Champions and Who To Play. If you'd like to see our other videos, then click the annotations on the screen. Otherwise, we're getting right into this. Champions are an integral part of League of Legends, and who you choose to play can have staggering implications on the outcome of the game. There are over 100 champions in the game, each with wildly varying playstyles and personalities. Champions are priced partially due to their difficulty, and partially due to how recently they've come out. You may be under the assumption that more expensive champions are simply better, but you'd be entirely wrong. For example, Ash the Frost Archer, Rise the Rogue Mage, and Garen the Might of Demacia are all among the cheapest champions in the game, but they are some of the most reliable and powerful in all the game as well. Another example to this end is Darius, the Hand of Noxus. He is a particularly new champion, thus he is more expensive. However, he is readily and handily defeated by someone who is very good at playing Kale the Judicator, one of the first champions ever released. Thus, your choice in champion should be dictated by your personal taste and willingness to learn over who is perceived as powerful, as League of Legends is constantly being updated and tweaked and what seems to be the most powerful champion at one point can easily be flipped around at any time, leaving you wishing that you had chosen to master a particular champion as opposed to just playing who was strong at the time. Champions are divided into classes defined by what items they build and what role they fulfill in a team. The current classes are mages, carriers, tanks and fighters, assassins, supports, and junglers. Mages are a class of characters in League of Legends who best represent how the game works and is played. They are also the most plentiful class in the game. Their primary focus is to farm enough minions and possibly kill opponents in the early stages of the game to become powerhouses in the mid and to late parts of the game. At time of writing, mages prefer to have a solo lane, particularly mid lane. Mages are quite easy to kill and many tend to lack escape moves, making mid lane a perfect home for them. Mid lane has very easy access points to all other lanes, making it great for characters who are strong early to go to other lanes to help their teammates. It is also the shortest lane, making escapes to defensive positions behind your towers much easier and simpler, allowing for slower and less mobile characters to survive easier. Mages are at their best when they have their ultimates and several powerful items. When geared and played correctly, many mages have the ability to melt and murder several enemy champions at once, giving them the nickname AP carries, as they would carry the team as normal carries would in later stages of the game. However, due to the nature of their items and abilities, mages cannot dominate the game forever, for as time goes on, real carries will be getting more powerful than them and will take on the role of killing entire teams. Mages then fall into the role of utility and control, using their vast amounts of stuns and other control moves to keep enemies in check for their team. Almost all mages build differently, but the main core builds tend to involve either massive burst damage with Rabadon's Death Cap and Void Stab, slow painful killing with Rally's Crystal Scepter and Leandri's Torment, or having lots of durability from items such as Rod of Ages and Zhonya's Hourglass. Mages can be quite versatile in their item choices, so never glue yourself to just one build. Mages we recommend are Rise, Ari, Annie, Lux, and Zyra. Mages we don't recommend to new players due to their difficulty are LeBlanc, Cassiopeia, Syndra, and Oriana. These characters are very powerful, but must be played well to unlock that strength. As their name would imply, carries in League of Legends are champions who are weak and must be carried by their team when the game begins, but they become monstrously strong and carry the game themselves by the time the game ends. Their primary focus is getting as much gold as possible as quickly as possible, as well as staying alive to deal their massive damage to everyone they can. Carries tend to prefer the side lanes, such as top or bottom, and enjoy having a support character to share the lane with. Since they care more about items and their auto attacks, they don't actually need to level up as quickly as mage characters, so sharing a lane is not as big of a deal. Supports in particular are not interested in farming minions, leaving all the money in the lane to the carry while also keeping the carry safe. In particular, the bottom lane is preferred for the carry in the support lane, as it gives a lot more control over the dragon, because Baron isn't actually an issue until much later in the game, and having a solo lane guarding the dragon is sometimes not suitable. Carries are at their absolute best when all six of their item slots has a powerful item that synergizes with another. In mathematical terms, majors are strong because each item they buy increases their power linearly. Carries are powerful because each item they buy increases their power exponentially. For example, a carry's first item would probably be Bloodthirster or Infinity Edge, as it's the most bang for your buck when you can buy at the beginning of the game. Both items give massive amounts of attack damage. Then, a carry will more than likely buy an item such as Phantom Dancer or Static Shiv, which gives them attack speed as well as critical strike chance. 
Both of these stats are significantly more powerful when you have a lot of attack damage, and in turn, attack damage is much better stat when you can critically strike and attack faster. And then the carry buys a Last Whisper, and the primary stat to build against them, Armor, becomes far less useful, and all their stats become infinitely better because they're not being reduced. They are a very math-based class and hard to master, but are worth it because of how influential they are to the game and how it is currently played. Carries we recommend are Graves, Ezreal, Misfortune, and Caitlyn. Carries we recommend for more skilled players are Vayne, Tristana, and Ferris. Tanks and fighters are the meaty powerhouses of League of Legends. They're at their happiest in the middle of teamfights, controlling the flow of battle, landing clutch stuns, or holding an opponent down to keep them off their carry. They prefer a solo lane so they can get the gold that they need to buy items that allow them to fulfill their preferred roles. This is currently top lane where they duel against other fighters and tanks and their impressive durability helps them stay in the lane for an exceptionally long time. Many tanks and fighters also enjoy jungling where they can get an uninterrupted gold flow and pick their fights at their discretion. They're at their strongest in the early to and mid game, relying on their powerful abilities and high starting stats to crush opponents and gank unsuspecting lanes. Building items for only massive damage though is very likely to get you killed as most tanks and fighters are melee and do not have much range or ways of keeping themselves safe. Being able to do massive damage doesn't help you if you're dead. Thankfully, however, League of Legends has many item choices that allow for both high damage and high durability. Fighters in particular love these items such as Frozen Mallet, Maul of Memorias, or even Abyssal Scepter depending on your choice of champion. Pure tanks, however, will more than likely opt for items such as Runic Bulwark, Locket of the Iron Solari, Banshee's Veil, and Frozen Heart. In team fights, tanks and fighters will have to make the conscious choice between diving after the enemy carry or working to defend their own carry from assassins and other fighters and tanks. You'll have to learn what options are better at what times if you wish to master this class. Just keep in mind that it, you can't win the game yourself and defending your team can be much more fruitful than trying to kill everyone yourself. Tanks we recommend for newer players, Ramus, Blitzcrank, Amumu, Maokai, and Jen. Fighters we recommend, Vi, Darius, Garen, Singed, and Volibear. We highly recommend Lee send to players seeking a fighter who is very powerful but difficult to master. Assassins in League of Legends are a dangerous and deadly class that can dismantle and tear apart enemy teams when played properly, or they can be entirely worthless when misplayed. Be wary. Assassins prefer solo lanes such as mid or top lane so they can gather the extremely powerful items they need to kill the other champions properly. They are at their best in the middle and later parts of the game where they can simply kill any and all champions who look at them funny. Assassins are feared by mages and carries alike, as they are prime candidates to stop their killing sprees and rampages. If a team is reliant on a carry to win the game for them, an assassin crushes their hopes and dreams in mere seconds as they turn a carry into wet mush. Assassins are particularly great in one-on-one -on -one scenarios as they tend to have the tools and mobility to force engagements and skirmishes on their terms. Assassins tend to lack the ability to control their opponents through stuns and slows, thus putting them on teams of tanks or supports who exemplify large amounts of control can lead to beautiful situations where entire teams are stunned and killed in a matter of seconds. Assassins prefer item combinations such as Rabidon's Death Cap with Void Staff or combining Black Cleaver with Last Whisper so they deal massive damage that is not reduced substantially by resistances. But assassins are almost required to build nothing but damage items to stay relevant in terms of killing power. This means they are remarkably easy to kill when their mobility and escape options are not available, making playing an assassin a risky endeavor, as there is no worse feeling than dying after you've failed your assassination attempt. Assassins we recommend Talon, Diana, and Katarina. Assassins we recommend to higher skill players Zed, Kha'Zix, and Akali. Supports are, in essence, one of the most difficult classes to play in League of Legends. They require much knowledge of the inner workings of the game, such as positioning and control, as well as knowledge of the playstyle of many, many different champions and how they interact with each other. On top of that, supports do not benefit much from building powerful items and slowly get less and less useful over the course of the game. Be aware, however, that supports are their strongest in the early laning phases of the game. Not benefiting much from powerful items is actually a blessing in disguise. This allows for supports to not worry about farming minions and focus on building items that will help their team survive and grow stronger. Wards will give you constant vision of the enemy team so your team can play better and not be concerned about being ganked and killed. Items such as Sorelia's Reverie and Runic Bulwark in particular will make your team much better at fighting as a group and can give them stats they need or too busy building other items. Supports are generally paired in a lane with a carry whom they can keep safe and share experience with, as supports are not interested in farming minions and can leave all the farm to the carry. 
To play a proper support well, you need to learn all of the best places for wards to cover as much of the map as possible with the fewest possible wards, as well as perfecting working with an ally to keep them safe while still achieving objectives on the map. Supports we recommend are Soraka, Tarek, Blitzcrank, and Lulu. Supports we recommend for more experienced players are Leona, Sona, and Thresh. In League of Legends, there are three lanes that lead between each of the bases, but what's in between these lanes? There is the jungle, the domain of junglers. It is filled with neutral monsters who grant bonus gold and experience on top of restoring health and mana or giving special buffs when slain. The jungle should be thought of as a fourth lane for characters who have the durability or damage for it. From the jungler, many champions can get farmed up in peace or take buffs and ganks and kill the enemy from the darkness. It is customary for the junglers to start at either the Ancient Golem or the Elder Lizard so they can begin their jungle trek with one of the powerful buffs they can grant. From there, a jungler can kill neutral monsters normally or attempt to surprise attack a champion in lane to help out their allies or shut down priority targets. Jungling is for more experienced players and should not be attempted until you know exactly what you're doing and why. Junglers we recommend are Warwick, Fiddlesticks, and Nocturne. High level junglers are Lee Sin, Udyr, and Maokai. Thank you very much for watching, and if you'd like to delve deeper in how to play League of Legends, click just one of the annotations on this video.